Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Love Hour Podcast. I'm your host, Miss Kev on stage, and I'm joined by my husband and co-host. Michael McMichaelson. All right. Uh, uh, Michael McMichaelson is not the NAACP Image Award nominated. Ooh, and I said it correct. Uh, welcome back. That was my bad. I went well, down. Man. Welcome back to um, the show. I We're going to see how this goes. I had an idea that I was going to talk about, or Kev had an idea actually, that you have an interview. <laughs> we were supposed to be done with the love hour by now. Negro, you was the one who said you I needed can't. an additional seven minutes I, that turned into 45. It did not. You I came lie. right down. You like, you I came lie. down and you was making Becca's soup and whatnot. You were lying. Gabby made the soup. That means you have to do the interview in here? Because I can just do this now. Is it a phone interview? Or is, it, is it audio or is it visual? It's phone. It's phone. Well, go and do it and let me just try to talk. It's not. It's it too. We got time. We can get through the first half. Uh, everything is fine. <laughs> Because this is going to be a struggle episode. So I had an idea initially, or Kev had an idea initially, to talk about um, jumping to conclusions. Mm -hmm. And so I researched jumping to conclusions based off the Merit at First Sight interaction between Jacob and Haley. Yeah. And this is actually a thing. It is called... You're right? No, no. Oh, it, is my called, it is called... It is called cognitive distortion and there's like seven of them that we people do including myself obviously that we do whenever we're talking and it fo it focuses on the negative instead of the positive and jumping to conclusions is one of them and you can do it by fortune telling or by mind reading and so in oh, wait, the, hold on it's jumping to conclusions the title or it's I like mean, jumping, cognitive dissonance yeah the, it's not cognitive dissonance it's 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 cognitive dissertation distortion. Cognitive distortion. It's called cognitive distortion. And there's like several of them, like catastrophizing could be one of them. Uh, maximizing and minimizing, meaning I, I minimize. Yes. I catastrophize. Yes. Even the fact how polar you are. I'm in or out, black or white. I'm well, hot and I'm cold. Well, cold. not just like that, but it's also like I won or I lost. Yeah, but that's yeah, but okay, but that's also like a cognitive distortion. How? There's like, okay, I'm gonna, you wanna go into it a little Let's bit? Let's go into a little bit. Okay. Alicia Cheek is here, that Beyond Meat Burger owes me nothing. Uh, no, it's not called dissertation, it's called distortion. She might be making fun. Hold on, I'll give you guys all of them. Cognitive. So wait, how did you look, at, how did you find this? What because I've on? read this before. Oh, okay. uh, what happened actually <laughs> is my therapist was like, you should look into cognitive distortion. And I was like, Ooh, eh, everybody calm down. Um, okay, so there's 15. I actually thought there were not 15. Um, Overgeneralizing is one of them. Filtering, a person engaging in filtering takes the negative details and magnify those details while filtering out all positive aspects of a situation. That is me. Say it one more time. Filtering is a cognitive distortion. And you do what? It is a person engaging in filter or mental filtering takes the negative details and magnifies those details while filtering out all the positive aspects of a situation. So that could be me either live seeing the three people not laughing and counting out yes. the 300 so or this seeing is three bad comments. Correct. For instance, a person may pick out a single unpleasant detail and dwell on it exclusively so that their vision of reality becomes darkened and distorted. When a cognitive filter is applied, the person sees only the negative and ignores anything positive. That is me. Yeah. I uh, wasn't saying agreeing. I just, I didn't realize that I think a lot of people do a, a version yeah. of this. Yeah. Well, the thing is, this is so most people do one of these at some point. Uh, the next one is polarized thinking, black, white thinking. This is you. And polarized thinking, things are either black or white, all or nothing. We have to be perfect or we're complete and abject failure. There is no middle ground. 
a person <laughs> with polarized thinking places people or situations in either or categories with no shades of gray or allowing the complexity of most people in most situations. A person with black or white thinking sees things only in extremes. I don't sound like me at all. So this sounds completely like me. This is what if Kevin has a sore throat, he's like, I'll never talk again. I'll never, I'll never talk. Not again. only will I never talk again, I'll never tour again, and my family will starve because we have no more dollars. I will never make a dollar, and there is no way I can talk because my voice is sore. That, but that is, um, I think that might be catastrophizing, though. I probably, I do both of those. Yeah, I, I wonder. Catastrophize everything. Oh yes, you do. The I other do. day, you don't answer three phone calls. She was murdered. She was taken away, or she left me, or she's cheating on me. <laughs> or she ran away, or she was always in the FBI this whole time and I blew her cover. Never like, oh, I didn't. The more likely thing is you didn't have your phone, oh my which God. I know about you, but Wait. it's always you were murdered. Did you ever think your parents were aliens? I did. Did you think your teachers were aliens? Just my parents. My mom never do. I, I cannot prove she do ever. I thought my parents were aliens and my teachers were aliens, but it's because when I was younger, my, my, my teachers didn't get sick. My teachers didn't have kids. Mm -hmm. They didn't have events to attend to. They were at school all day, every single day. I saw my teacher. She worked for the Great American Cookie Company at the mall one time, and she was serving That's, cookies. And I was just like, that we pay teachers "You're outside. More. You don't. You pay can't. Teachers more. You can't be out. You don't live at the school. Why are you here?" I thought all my teachers were aliens. I remember when the boys were younger, and one of their teachers got pregnant, and I was like. Teachers don't here. have kids. I don't understand. What do you mean? Get, teachers don't have kids. Or like they got sick and they were just out today. And I'm like, teachers don't get sick. Like I, I freaked out because my teacher had an apron on and that little hat, the visor. And we were going there to the oh, American Cooking Company. And I was that's like, That's sad. What? Pay teachers more. Make that a hashtag. Yeah, that was terrible. Yeah. Was I remember when we were in high school. That one of our teachers worked at, um, oh, what was that place in uh, Lakewood Mall that was like Leonard's? Leonard's? I can't think of the name of it, but anyway. The food or clothing? No, it was clothing. It was a little raggedy. Mr. Rags? No, no, no. It was like Sears, but not Sears. Oh, uh, Got Shocks. That's exactly right. It was always going It was Got Shocks. She worked at Got Shocks because Leonard's is like, you know. You don't remember Leonard's? <laughs> oh yeah, it's a clothing place. Oh, I thought you were Is that from Toledo? Maybe, I don't know. Nobody knows what Leonard's is? This is all over the These place. These are regional department stores. Maybe, Could Leonard's be. might be. But anyway. Stop calling me! You have to take this call. No, that was spam. I answered it. You know your spam by. That Did you bad. answer? No, no, no. Oh, yeah, but they know they're spam. Uh, but anyway, I remember that. So anyway, that's polarized thinking, black or white thinking. Over I'm bringing race into this. Over generalization, and this we should do this or at least go to break because I'm not going to be able to. Okay, over generalization and this cognitive distortion, a person comes to a general conclusion based on a single incident or a single piece of evidence. If something bad happens just once, they expect it to happen over and over again. I'm and also that way. Me too. Wait, what is this thing? This it's, is Kevin's life. <laughs> Remember the first time Keep Your Distance dropped in sales? And I was like, well, that's it. I'm not funny. Nobody cares. No, I'll never sell a ticket again. No, no. This, when um, uh, we were, uh, our lawyers was trying to say things about doing stuff with music. Don't tell these people this. No? Don't, okay. don't, don't tell them it's funny. Uh, oh, um, trying to tell. Stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, tell them. Tell them. That you know, there might be problems with us using or Kevin using the um, musical, um, the uh, musical parodies parody. that he's doing for the music video. You know, he does the music videos from the '90s. We got on a phone call with like Transit and us, and Kev was like, "If we can't do this, I don't know what we're gonna do. There's nothing else. There is nothing else available for us to promote this show if we cannot do music videos. Period." <laughs> And I was like, hmm. Kevin, let's be like really careful about like resting your whole creative energy on this one single idea. 
Like there are so many other options, so many things you can do. You are so very creative. I assure you, I mean, I'm, something else will come up. Brennan and them were like, okay, we might not be able to do this. I, I was like, I, I freaked out. I'll find somebody else to do it then. I'll pay somebody else to do it. He was like, okay, well, take it easy. We're in this together. No one helps me creative, creatively. And then this was like, have you asked anybody? I was like, no. <laughs> And then the next time I actually thought of the Malcolm and Marie thing and the whole thing. And I thought of it. It was right after. Right after that. Yes. But then also I would never know how to do it. It's I, I don't know how to promote anything. And it's also this week we're doing with no music. Yes. <coughs> but that happens all of the time. I think we all, like I said, all of us can find ourselves in this. And uh that's it's so funny though how I can see. Um I'm trying to think of an example that I do this. Actually, for me, it doesn't come like that, though. It comes like, oh, actually, I internalize it more than that. But it's like, oh, I didn't hug her when she came in. Mostly, you're such a bad person. She's going to think that you're so mean. Don't be so mean. Just why can't you hug people? You don't like hugging people. What's wrong with you? Why don't you? you be in your <laughs> yes. Husband? And it's like, then you spiral. Uh, we're going to take a break to tell you about KiwiCo. KiwiCo is a subscription box that comes every single month with a crate full of science and art projects for you and your child to do together. We all know that we are stuck at home more than we probably want to since the start of quarantine, which probably means your kids are using their video games yep. and looking at a computer or staring at the TV all day long. This is a great way to not only engage your child, have some fun uh, time together, but it's also a way to implement learning. KiwiCo focuses on STEM focus projects and STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And it's a great way to cultivate your child's natural curi uh, curiosity and creativity with hands-on projects that you'll receive every single month. The project that we received is the walking robot project and you can get these by age group. So I have like preteen age and they'll send a box to you and you and your child will work on the project together. It's a great time to spend time together to curate memories. And like I said, you're going to be figuring things out because some of this stuff I needed STEM when I was younger. Let's just say that. So it's just a really great, fun way to engage your child and also activate some learning. With KiwiCode, there's something for every kid or kid at heart. Get 30% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line with code LOVEHOUR at KiwiCode.com. That's 30% off your first month at K-I-W-I-C-O dot com promo code love hour love hour one last time that's kiwi kiwi like the fruit k-i-w-i-c-o dot com promo code love hour love hour and now let's get back to the show okay so we just finished the overgeneralizations. The example is, for instance, I don't remember if I said this, if a student gets a poor grade on one paper in one semester, they conclude that they are a horrible student and should quit school. Yes. This is um, definitely something that I do. I get, I will take one and you have what's called, uh, yes, that's where we're going. And you have confirmation bias. So if you already have a lingering insecurity anyway, you will look for things to confirm that. Mm -hmm. So if you already you feel like, yeah. So if you feel like you don't go into this example, you don't feel like you belong in school or whatever, anytime something comes up to support that, that's what you're going to focus on. Yeah. Okay. The next one, which brings us to married at first sight, which is the conversation we just had off camera with our Patreon is jumping to conclusions. She's a runner. She's a track star. She's and, jumping to the conclusion. She don't know how. Correct. And that is what Haley, or I'm sorry, Jacob did to Haley. Can, do you remember the scenario? Could you say it? Uh, what he was mad about? Um, she had or give out. an overview. She had went out. Uh, he thought they were going to spend the night or spend some time together. She had went out with uh, Paige, I believe, in the apartment complex. Yeah. And she didn't come back when he thought she was coming back. Uh, so he said, you just going to stay out all late. I, I asked you to come back, but he didn't. Right. He just texts her like, yo, how's it going? And she was like, fine. 
So he said, um, basically, you, you, you didn't tell the truth. You wanted to hang out all night. If I would have asked you to come back, you would have said no. and You would have made me feel dumb and you wouldn't have come back. And then we would have gotten into an argument. And then he just went all down the mulberry bush about what was going to happen just because he didn't really communicate clearly what he thought he did. And he had a conversation with her in his mind and she was wrong at every step of the way. And so what jumping to conclusions is it's twofold. There's fortune telling and then there is um, mind reading. And he did both. What's fortune telling? So fortune telling is predicting what you're going to say. So let me give the example. I actually wrote it down because this is what I prepared for. Cognitive distortions. Okay. Fortune telling involves assuming that you know exactly what will happen in the future. For example, fortune telling could involve thinking you're going to fail a test because you struggle with some of the practice questions. My reading, or maybe this is my reading. My reading involves assuming that you can accurately know what other people are thinking. For example, mind reading could involve thinking that someone you hate must hate you simply because they didn't seem enthusiastic when you told them good morning. Oh, people do that all the time. So fortune telling is what will happen. So he did mind fortune reading, telling. but he also said, and I know you were going to say this. Okay, so what's the difference? So I think fortune it, telling is predicting the events. Assuming you know oh, what will happen. Works. Yeah. Fortune telling is assuming you know what will happen in the future. Mm -hmm. Mind reading involves assuming you can think accurately. You can accurately know what other people are thinking. I, so he, he did mind both. Read and fortune yeah, he, he did both. Thinking and forecast even too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did both. Listen, I know it's easy to make fun of people on TV, but I got to be honest with y'all here on this episode of the Levi Podcast. I'm an astute fortune teller with uh, my wife. I, and mind reading. And mind reading. Um, and you again, like Jacob, 80s boy, 80s boy, like 80s Jacob, 80s boy. In my fortune telling mind reading, Melissa never does good things. Oh, the other person's the always the villain. She was the villain, she was always the bride, not the bridesmaid. I, I, I'm what I the don't bride and not the bridesmaid. That yeah, was terrifying. I uh, should bring it up. Oh. I, it was, um, I was wrong. I mean, uh. I was trying to say she's always wrong, not good. But anyway, okay. I always think if I ask her to do something, right? In my mind, if I don't actually ask her, she's gonna say no. Whatever the intended response I want, she's going to say the opposite of that intended response. Then she also might make me feel dumb for asking. So to protect, pr protect myself from her re perceived rejection, I don't ask it. But then, then I'd be mad at her for how she acted in my head because she didn't answer the way I wanted her to in my head, but I hold her accountable for that in real life and be mad. Like if I asked her this, she probably would say no. So she always saying no to stuff I don't ask. So about, she's always saying no to stuff I don't ask. Yes. So about six months ago, I decided to give her a fair shot on, and it's not on everything, but I do do it consistently on certain subjects. So what I started to do was just ask her. And if it was going to be no, it was going to be no because she said no. And much to my surprise, much to my chagrin, what do I say? Much to my chagrin. chagrin. Much to my chagrin, I'm a terrible fortune teller and mind reader. I, yes, Anita, it's like preparing yourself for perceived rejection. Uh, a lot of times, mo most of the times, I would say, she did not respond how she would in my mind. And then I was like, I'm going to ask her something that I don't even think I probably would never even ask her just to see where she stood on it. And even then she was more open to it than I thought. And then I had to really look in the mirror and be like, Kev, you kind of trash for that because you didn't even give her a chance to to surprise you. You didn't even give. And even if she did say no to a thing, she was more open to the conversation that than I expected. Mm -hmm. So now it's kind of like mad at myself because I was just like, dang. All these doggone years, I perceived her to be this one way. And and of course, in, in our minds, one rejection, one thing that you ask that they don't go with immediately when with full on vigor, you will you copy and paste that. Oh, that's the overgeneralization. Yeah. You copy and paste that into well, she responds to this this way. Therefore, anything I don't think she's gonna agree with, she's gonna respond like that. 
You know what's interesting about this is that maybe this is an excuse and I'm going to I'm going to lead with that. Okay. Okay, like I I recognize that I I need to challenge myself on this because there is part of me that says history has shown Melissa will act like this. So then I base that off that history. Mm-hmm. Like uh Maybe this is Dr. Phil's fault. Dr. Phil used to say the best predictor of the future is the past. Yeah. But is that a lie? Because people can change and evolve and grow. And and you're not, but you're not allowing people the opportunity. I'm answering my own question. You're not allowing people the opportunity to grow and evolve and change because you're basing them off what they did in the past. Yep. But also people be acting like themselves because everywhere you are, you are. Where you are, you are. I don't know the right answer. Yeah, I think it's um, low key. I feel like it's a more dangerous pothole to fall into when you've been married for a long time because you actually have plenty of supporting evidence. Supporting evidence. Yeah. Where even if it's, you know, if you were in a court of law, they might be like circumstantial. You it know, is all circumstantial. Relevant. It's, That's it's, good. If I ask Melissa that she wants spaghetti and she says no, I'd be like, well, if I ask her for sex, she won't say no to. It'd be like that type of stuff. Like yeah. I'm making a joke, but that's literally how your mind works. And I think that's because one of the people that we got on the Love Hour, they were saying human nature is to protect yourself first. Oh yeah. And your body perceives, you know, emotional threats just the same as real ones. So uh <laughs> Leah Hayes said, Dr. Phil don't we know what he'd be talking about. That's hysterical. <sighs> Sorry. Uh, I lost my train of thought. That was so funny. Yeah, it was. I I, I do think uh, that it does not allow people the opportunity to grow and evolve and change and uh, shock you. I do agree yes. with that. Um, so trying to give people that grace of I, the bottom line is that you are uh, making us. You're jumping to conclusions. You are jumping to conclusion. And the funny thing about the Jacob Haley situation is how many people are in the comments, how many of us say we do that, but watching him say it aloud, what we often just think internally, you realize how ridiculous it is. Oh man, I listen, I learned that with Karen. I actually noticed myself in Jacob in that episode. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I done played that. I call it playing the tape forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, I definitely have done that. And you know, it's just like, it's, it's too much. No, it is. To work on yourself all the time. Danny has this thing where she do, uh, or I don't know, does you or Danny? Together. Okay, definitely. What happened was that at the beginning, even at the beginning of this year, I've been talking about like, I just want to break from like working on myself. Like Mm -hmm. I just say I want to break because I'm constantly like in my head about um, things that I'm not measuring up on, things that I need to do better at. I'm constantly in my head about it. And so I was finally like, I'm done. I don't want to grow. I don't want to evolve. I don't want to do nothing. I just want to be toxic for a week. And so she was like, yes. Toxic week. Let's be toxic. Maybe she just kept saying it all the time. No, she definitely, because what will happen is if we go out to dinner or if she comes to the house, she'll be like, Melissa, I'm coming over. We finna be toxic. I don't need no growth. I don't need no no deep conversations. We just finna be toxic. Mm -hmm. So self-work, like I like therapy. I enjoy it. I enjoy the growth, but. When I miss and I don't have to grow that week, I'll be like, mm-hmm, I can be stagnant. Yeah, it's so much easier to uh, be stagnant <laughs> because looking at yourself, working on yourself, seeing your shortcoming, it's um, it's exhausting. It's exhausting is the right word. It's exhausting. And I, I definitely get tired. And so being able to just be like we were uh, sounds like more neutral than toxic. Someone was like, don't say toxic. I'm saying it kind of tug in cheek because it is a like buzzword these yeah. days because I'm really not toxic. However, sometimes uh, Steven will come over and we'll have conversations and I'll say something. I'll say the sky is blue and three minutes later be like, actually, it's green because Danny said something to contradict that. And I'd be like, I'm contradicting myself because I'm toxic. So I don't care. Uh, and we say, like I said, it is kind of funny, but it's just a matter of like, yeah. not growing or I don't know if growing is the right word, but just giving yourself a break, yes. you know, just giving yourself a break. And I think we all need that break. Hey guys, listen, Melissa's wavering. 
fantastic. Beautiful, amazing. I spent a lot of money on it. My wedding ring, I lost the first one. The second one I got from Aldo. You know why? Because as a man, I always felt like, well, that's not my thing to be excited about my wedding ring. You know, it's not manly. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. And I don't even know what size I am. Luckily, Manly Bands is here for you. The man out there in the world who wants to shine just like his woman shines. You know, you don't have to get your rings from Aldo for $10 just because you're afraid to go in and get side. You don't have to struggle and have a piece of crap ring made out of coal. You can have an amazing ring that you can be proud of, know your size. You can get a pinky ring if you want. And that's because of Manly Bands. Listen here, guys. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to get started by ordering the Manly Ring Sizer from Manly Bands to ensure that your ring will fit perfectly during the work and play. Once you know your size, it's time for the fun part. Manly Bands has an insane selection of materials to choose from. Gold, wood, antler, steel, dinosaur bone. And they even, do have a dinosaur and bone. And even the meteorites that kill them. You can choose from one of Manly Bands' curated collections like the Jack Daniels Whiskey Barrel Collection. Look, I got the baller, okay? And I love this ring. It's something that I can be proud of. I'm super excited about it. I'm proud of my ring. I no longer have to go inside and hide myself. I love the doggone baller ring. Here it is. I wear it all the time on my hand, Manny Bands. I enjoyed this process. And fellas out there, I want you to enjoy this process too. Or ladies, I want you to make sure your husband or boyfriend or side chick man, husband, side man, side chuck. What's a, what's a man's version of side Child, chuck? Any one of those. Side chuck. Um, to have the ring that he deserves. Listen, once you select your band, Manly Bands offers free shipping worldwide, a 30-day exchange policy, and a free warranty. While there might be a 50% chance your marriage is working out, there's a 100% chance that you're, you're going to love your wedding band. The other thing I really want to say, though, is they have a wide range of options, and not just options. They have a wide range of price points. Yeah. So Kevin's ring was literally $275, and they do have a uh, payment plans. So you can buy that with your stimmy and still have 1100 left over. Yeah. To order your Manly Band and get 21% off plus a free silicone ring, go to manlybands.com slash love. Love. And enter promo code love. That's manlybands.com slash love. Love. Code love for 21% off Manly Bands. The best rings, period. And that's on who? Mary Had a Little Lamb. lamb. And while Mary was singing uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb, she did it in a great bra from Third Love. Third Love. Mary had a little yams. Ain't yams in the big. We talking about the friend. Yeah, it's just rhyme. Uh, third Love. Y'all know what it is. I love Third Love. Most, if not all of my bras are Third Love. They have more than 80 sizes, ranging from double A to I. They have high, half cup sizes. They have bands ranging from 30 to 48. They have no slip straps. They have signature memory foam cups. They have all of the colors, including nude colors for brown skin girls. Q Beyonce, the most decorated Grammy singer of all time. You can at me on that. Uh, they also have uh, their signature fit sizer quiz uh, that you can take and you are able to be accurately sized for the perfect fitting bra. Third Love knows one true fit is out there. So right now they're offering my listeners 20% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash love hour. Love hour. Now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 20% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash love hour or 20% off. All right. Almost done? Yeah. Give me my drink. First of all, it was my drink. That's first of all. No, she is not the most decorated female only. It's performer. It's performer for singer in the category of singer. Yes. In the category of singer. There's producer. Quincy Jones has one more and some old. His name is like George. A German dude has three more, but he's a conductor. Yeah. He, his music ain't slap. But as far as singers, performers, she's the top. Beyonce, Giselle, Nose Carter. Period. Period. All right. Um, we'll do a, a few more. Okay. Catastrophizing. Yep. 
What is it? When a person engages in catastrophizing, they ex sir, is it not? Go ahead, tell me. Okay. When a person engages in catastrophizing, they expect disaster to strike no matter what. This is also referred to as magnifying and can also come out in its magnifying. opposite behavior, minimizing, which is what I do. In this distortion, a person hears out a problem and uses what if questions, what if tragedy strikes, what if it happens to me to imagine the absolute worst occurring. For example, a person might exaggerate the importance of insignificant events such as their mistake or someone else's achievement, or they may inappropriate shrink the magnitude of their significant events until they appear tiny. That's what I do. With practice, you can learn to answer each of the, okay, whatever. We don't want to learn how to figure the, them out yet. <laughs> to, we're just identifying. <laughs> I minimize, you catastrophize. Yes. But I also seem to, and this is maybe the black and white thing, I also seem to think everything will be great every time. And if it's not great, it is the worst thing ever. I don't know if that's a distortion. What do you mean? I don't know. I don't know if that's a distortion. Because also, I think it's magnifying the bad is what makes it the distortion. Okay, got it, not got magnifying it, got it. the good. Yeah. I don't know. We might have to figure that out. But minimize, when I think of the very specific example that a lot of people know is the love hour. I will minimize the accomplishment of that and maximize the mistakes every time I get a chance. Really? Correct. You acknowledge this? Correct. Wow. I didn't know you was aware of yourself. You be like, this love hour ain't nothing but tread. I never did nothing. Nobody even watch it. I never seen nothing. And then you'd be like, I'm going to quit the love hour. And people be like, girl, no, no. You'd be like, y'all like this old little ugly thing I did? No, I and I do that as well. If I don't feel like there is a, an imaginary made up, listen, all the things that don't make sense, okay? <laughs> Scale that I judge myself on. There is a yardstick in which I judge myself on that is very high. And if I do not meet that standard, then I do have a heart. Then I assume people don't care. And also what you do is this, get on my nerves, because what happens is you, when the credit is due, you, you minimize the credit. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is a great episode. Liz, you did a good job. Oh, you know, I just found this on the internet. I ain't add nothing to it. Oh no, that's just the author. I ain't researched it. Oh, I just said a thing or two. I, well, because I, um, and are you agreeing though? I'm explaining that I, because of how I am about credit, mm -hmm. I am very, um, I try to be, I'm not going to say I always, but I try to be very aware of giving credit to, to where credit is due. Yeah. So that way you don't think if I make up something, I want the credit. But if I do not, I try to be cognizant of giving credit to where it belongs. Okay. And so sometimes in doing that, I may minimize my contribution to ensure that I am amplifying the person who I believe the credit belongs okay. to. That's actually, I, I understand that. I disagree with why you do that, but I got no. Wait, what that. you saying? What am I saying? Wait, you disagree with what? Why you do that? Because you take your whole part out of the equation. Correct. And that's right. the, that's what I'm saying. I, I get not wanting to take credit for some work you didn't do, but I don't get not taking credit for anything. Yeah. So Passionate for God said it goes back to my imposter syndrome of being an expert. I think I very much think that they're very, very closely related. Yes. Um, if not one in the same. Yes. I absolutely believe that. And my sister and I were just having a car. Actually, what happened was I was having a conversation with Kevin the night before Me? about um uh feeling dismissed one of my biggest triggers someone posted this on instagram and i was like thank god it is not just me because i promise you as much as i know things are not just me i sometimes can still fall in the trap of believing things are isolated to just me yep. and so uh i was i i recognize that one of my triggers okay i'm gonna give an example okay i'm excited if I say, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of an example that's like not related. 
Oh, I'm going to give my sisters. Okay. Okay. My sister's example is that if she uh, she was in a meeting and she suggested something, you know, excuse me, Miss Boss Lady, I would like to implement uh, a new group. I would like to implement XYZ group because ABC group is not applicable to me. And so there are people in this room that also this meeting isn't applicable to. Instead of, so instead of attending ABC group, I'm going to spearhead starting XYZ group instead my sister, she does it. The very next meeting, her boss says, Susie said that she was going to implement XYZ group, which we understand because ABC group, this group isn't applicable to those people. So great thinking. I'm so appreciative of you thinking of such a great idea. And my sister feels like, So you mean tell me <laughs> that I sat in this chair, <laughs> raised my hand, <sighs> gave my idea, and you forgot me so much so that not only did you say someone in this room said something and I don't, you also dismissed me and gave the credit to someone else? Yeah. Literally, the night before, I gave a very similar example to Kevin. And I was like, I am recognizing that that is a trigger for me. If I say something, if I suggest something, if I whatever, and that credit is not attributed to me, I feel dismissed and unseen. Yep. And so it's not always just about the like, Kevin gave this uh, idea. It's not always just about like assigning the credit. For me, it is also about ensuring that you are seen and that you are heard. And so it is an acknowledgement to me that I see you and I'm not taking your idea and um, dismissing you. It's literally what black people often say happens that are, we are erased. Yes. And that's what you feel like. You feel erased. You want to be like Eliza? I, yes. Erased. No, I want to come back to yeah, the narrative. I'm, I'm putting myself yes. back in the narrative. Correct. Yes. That's black women working trigger overlooked forgotten and dismissed. Yeah. And it's one of my triggers. I want to, because I, then what happens is, at least for me, the narrative I begin to tell myself, which goes back to these distortions, the narrative I begin to tell myself is that, am I that unmemorable? Mm -hmm. how, how in the world, it's, what, what about me allows me to be so easily forgotten? What about, and then you start, then once you start internalizing that, you're going to look for ways in which, oh, that's why no one did yeah. this because I'm not. And then it becomes a whole. Whole to do. I oh, get it. Yes. And so that's why it's always um, important to me to assign that credit, to make sure that I am saying, I see you, I hear you, I acknowledge your contribution. In doing that, what I am also doing, the flip side of that coin is minimizing myself yes. to ensure other people. So I minimize my yeah, own personal there. contribution in order to acknowledge other people. And that's not good either. No, no, Liz. Yeah. So I definitely agree with that. So someone says sometimes they do be forgetting. I agree with that. Like at the end of the day, that's absolutely true. Sometimes people absolutely forget. Um, and I agree. And you can give that grace. I think the example, you know, I gave a condensed version, but the example that my sister gave and the example that I gave uh, and I have given, it's when it's repeat, when it's done repeatedly yeah. that you understand uh, or you start to begin to believe, not necessarily that it's true, That's but good. you start to believe that it's purposeful, that it's intentional, and this says something about me, that I'm unmemorable. You know what's interesting in my therapy session the other day, it's a little unrelated, but I'll bring it back home. She was saying that uh, children, when they are very young, they cannot process that their parents do anything bad or wrong. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if your parent is uh, not a part of your life, it's not because they are Irresponsible. It's because I did something wrong mm -hmm. to make. Oh, them that not makes sense. Yes, yes, yes. Be, or, and uh, when you grow up, you realize actually your parents could have been wrong, mm -hmm. and probably often were wrong. And I think that's what uh, happens in adulthood a lot of times, 
we are incapable of us not being at fault somehow. Right. Either trying to be fair to other people, giving them the benefit of the doubt, or just being harsher on ourselves. We 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 give more grace for others and oh. and share more criticism than we deserve. That's another one of these. Is it? I mean, I'm on BAG today. Uh, what's funny about us going over these um, cognitive distortions is that my therapist actually sent me this list for me to review because uh, something that I do often is the maximizing, uh, minimizing that we just talked about, but also jumping to conclusions. I think that's probably one of the most relatable distortions that people do jump is jump to conclusions. We play the tape forward and make decisions off things that haven't happened right. or haven't been said. Yes. And um, my therapist was there to help me not jump to the conclusion, but instead come to that conclusion. Mm. And so that's why we want to tell you about BetterHelp because they are a platform in which you can find a therapist who can help walk you through all yeah. of your all of the cognitive distortions should that be applicable to your therapy session and help you um, because they also have fixes to each of the um, to the distortions. We use BetterHelp. My therapist is actually on the BetterHelp app. And um, I talk to her once, twice a week, once or twice a week. Uh, you can text her through the app or text your therapist, not if you have a girl or guy, but you can text your therapist through the app. Um, they can send you things. It's just a really great way to touch base. And you can do that from the comfort of your own home. You don't have to go out and, you know, go into the dangers of the world if you don't feel safe going outside of your home. All of those things, BetterHelp allows you to do. BetterHelp wants you to start living life today. Visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily. Visit betterhelp.com slash love hour. Love hour. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, and join the over 1 million people that have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. This podcast is support, supported by BetterHelp. BetterHelp. And the Love Hour listeners will get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash love hour. Love Okay, let's go through like maybe three or four more. I'm not doing all 15 of these. All right. Personalization. Personalization is a distortion where a person believes that everything others do or say is some kind of direct personal reaction to them. Woo! That sounds like somebody I know. The only other distortion that more closely aligns to who I am as a person outside of maximizing and minimizing is personalization. Don't take it personal, Lisa. Personal, Lisa. Sometimes you be doing stuff. I'd be like, okay, no, no, you don't agree. A person engaging in personalization may also see themselves as the cause of some unhealthy external event that they were not responsible for. Mm. I do this a lot. You do this with me? I do this with a lot of peoples. Mm. If you are a lot of peoples, I feel I'd be like, girl. Girl, I wasn't even meant to. I'd be like, in my head, when I have my conversation where you're wrong, I'd be like, girl, how do you take that that way? Why are you I, take that? That ain't even what I meant. That is 100%. And you know what it is, though? Uh, it goes like part of the reason I'm able, like, I was able to come up with I'm worth it as is without change, without exception. Part of the reason I'm able to um, talk about I am the reason and the occasion. The reason why it is that those things first spoke to me. Yep. Because at the root of who I believe I am is so flawed yeah. that from that comes the affirmation of speaking to that broken, unworthy piece of me that I believe that I am. 100%. And so when I'm able to like come out of that and speak to that person, those affirmations are born. Yes. It's part of the reason why, like I know on social media, the, the, they've gone viral, but people do it in a way where they're just talking about the clothes. And it's so to me and the way that it came to me is so much bigger than just the clothes. Yes. It is more talking about my worth and my value 
And that's how those things are born. And so the personalization, how it shows up is that it speaks to that piece of myself that believes I am so flawed yes. and broken and unworthy. And, and so anytime something goes wrong, it has to be my fault. It has right. to be something about me that allowed this to be. Yes. How do you know all this when you read it, but then when it be happening, you don't know. Listen, if there's one thing that I am, it's self-aware. That's why you need toxic week. Yes. I, if there is one thing that I am, I am almost too self-aware. Acutely self-aware. I am acutely self-aware. I'm very much self-aware. Um, and that's part of the reason why I, I'm so acutely in tune to who I am that I can magnify those flaws. Magnify the flaws in me. I, they, I don't gloss over them. I, I I can hone in on them yes. and that's what, you know, it makes it hard, but that's honestly, that's why, that's where personalization comes from. How do you combat this? Do we know that? Yeah, there are things that I didn't look those up. <laughs> I didn't. It's toxic Listen, week. I feel like the step, <laughs> it can't week. be toxic week and identifying this. I think you uh, hit the nail on the head as a partner it makes more sense. So many things make more sense. What's that? Like how you be tripping. Continue. You here now. I Go and put like your that. foot in the boo boo and. Well, I'm... anyway, I think uh, the point I was trying to make before uh, somebody texted me a bad analogy. Who was that texting me? Um, I, I I internalized what I did to make her be this uh -huh. upset. <laughs> but you get in there and beat yourself up. Oh yeah, and you take stuff that I said, and you <laughs> no longer in the bag, and and then you apply stuff that I didn't say. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, you yeah. make it hurt more than I even ever made it. Or I mean, obviously, I never intend to hurt you. Right, right, right. But if I do step on your toes a little bit, you go and then drop a brick on them and break them more. A Brown said, "Come on, let's. We need the solutions. <laughs> we got to fix it." Listen, I don't have them. I ain't gonna lie to you. But the other thing is that when you are um, so the bad part of being self-aware and because I think people some uh, some not in Patreon, but like some of the comments when I said it originally were like, there's no such thing as being self-aware. And I think the bad part of being self-aware is when what I just said, when you focus on your shortcomings and don't allow yourself to celebrate the areas in which you're good. Yes. And that's what being too self-aware is. Well, the bad part of being too self-aware, I guess there, there, you could be very self-aware and there's a balance. Yes. I haven't struck the balance. So when, when I say I'm too self-aware, I'm so self-aware to the point where I'm, I'm too far focused on the things that I need to work on, which yep. is why I'm constantly trying to grow and evolve and read the podcast or listen to the podcast and read the books and whatever is because I'm all I'm always like acutely focused on those shortcomings that I don't have the room and this, and I don't allow myself the space to celebrate the things that I'm actually really good at. Agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, that's definitely mine. Okay, we'll do two more. Okay. Control fallacies. This distortion involves two different but related beliefs about being in complete control of every situation in a person's life. Wait, what now? This one didn't immediately jump off the page that it's me or you. Do you think it's you? This distortion involves two different but related beliefs about believing, about being in complete control of every situation in a person's life. In the first, if we feel externally controlled, we see ourselves as helpless, as helpless, a victim of fate. Oh, this isn't you at all. That's not what I thought I was saying. OK, we'll move on. I was like, but I ain't too yeah, there's two of them. But we don't think those are applicable. We're not going to use those. I don't do those. When a person, this is blaming. We'll do one more after this. Blaming. When a person engages in blaming, they hold other people responsible for their emotional pain. They may also take the opposite track and instead blame themselves for every problem, even those clearly outside of their own control. Uh, I probably place more blame on myself than other people. Yes. But I'm also fully aware of when it's not my fault, too. Are you? I think so. You disagree? 
I feel like you be taking things on that ain't your fault and make make them your fault. Really? Yes. Huh. We talk about it with the uh, go back to. Go back to. Well, it's true. Okay. No, no, no. I, I, but I don't know. For emotional pain. No, I wouldn't say emotional pain. Yeah, that's what the part where I was like, I don't think I, it's for emotional pain. Okay, I agree with that. I think I don't know now. Okay, we're gonna move on. <laughs> uh, should statements. Uh, oh, this one's me as well. Appear as a list of ironclad rules about how every person should behave. People who break the rules make a person following these statements very angry. Is that you? Me? Yes. No. All I do is break rules. You and Mel is the rule followers. I'm a rule follower, but did you hear what they're saying? You make a list of ironclad rules of how about how people should behave. You think I do that? Yes. Give me 17 examples right now. When people do things that are opposite to the way that you think, the first thing that you say is they are dumb. <laughs> and I'm like, or maybe they just think differently. Thinking differently to me is dumb though. That's what I'm saying. So you have a list of how things or an idea of the way people should behave and operate. And if you operate contrary to them. You're dumb. What is this? Uh, uh, why are you upset? That's it. <laughs> why are you saying yeah. that? <laughs> um, yeah, do you disagree? I don't even know anymore. All right, last one, because you're, you're falling asleep. I ain't. This is just too much for my head, this big head. Okay, let's do this one. The final one, number 15, heaven's reward fallacy. This final cognitive distortion is the false belief that a person's sacrifice and self-denial will evict. Child, this is Paige. The final cognitive distortion is the false belief that a person's sacrifice and self-denial will eventually pay off as some global force is keeping score. Oh, this is what Chris Rock was talking about. He was saying, nice, I mean, eventually uh, good people will win. He was like, no, sometimes bad people win forever and then they just die. Ooh. Is this a fallacy of... It's Christianity. Is Christian, is Christianity, is Christianity this fallacy? Not saying... I want to be clear on what I'm saying. Sometimes peopleisms isn't always biblical. Yes. So I'm not saying that's the way that God designed it to be, but I wonder if our interpretation is sometimes that we need to martyr ourselves to get the, the heavenly reward. Yeah. M martyr? Yeah. Yes. This is page a thousand percent. Where she God has wants me to go through this stuff that is bad. Some Therefore, people's yeah. relationship to Christianity is rooted in this fallacy. One hundred percent. That this is, is like, good toxic religion. Only bad things will happen, and if the meek shall inherit the earth, type of thing. Oh my gosh, me and my sisters. Oh my gosh, me and my sister struggle with this as well. This is, when, listen, this is what Chris Roberts said. What? Because bad people stay winning. They be living in a long, long time. It's so true. <laughs> My sister and I always talk about that scripture, the meek will inherit the earth and, and our interpretation of that. Yes. And long suffering, specifically talking about Paige, that we have to endure all of this hardship. Yes. We you. need to endure all of this hardship because that's the way God would have it. Yes. That's what Paige's main problem is. Why she's stuck up in there with that man now because she feel like. God wants me to go through this. Mm -hmm. And God wants good things for us too. I don't know why we believe that we don't serve a God that would want to bestow good things on yes. us, but instead constantly wants to challenge us and it have us good. endure. Yes. And like when do we be done with enduring? When do we be dirt? When, I want to be dirt. Yes. I already been endured. I want to be done with this. I want to yes. be dirt. We have to endure on earth in order to 
she said when in heaven in heaven is when we get it in heaven is when we get it no i want some stuff now that's kind of how we got through slavery it's silly on the curl of purple when so oh shoot it went away when sophia ran up on her mag because she told harpo to beat her silly said this life be over soon heaven lasts always mm -hmm. i almost tried to read it but joy coming in the morning all right anything else kevin no i don't have i know you're tired I don't have the fixes for these, but I assure you they do exist. Go home and be sad uh, as a fix. No, there really are ways to counter and challenge these cognitive distortions. We did not go through all of them. There are there are 15 of them. I didn't even realize there was 15, uh, but there are 15 of them. So if you found yourself in any of these, um, please go back and... Um, not only read about them, but find the the fix to them as well. Yes. The, the intervention is the word I've been looking for this whole time. There are interventions to these. Please go back and do that. I apologize that I didn't um, provide those interventions. Anything you want to add? No. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us on today's Love Hour. Bye. Bye.